Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord and our Crusade Carnate focused playthrough. Uh, I'm obviously not entirely sure if we're going to stick with them, but I personally feel like it would be really fun to find out where they take things when they don't get eliminated in the first couple of, well, years, I guess? Because <laughs> I'm not entirely sure how soon it was that the Empire, one of the Empires, eliminated the Crusade Carnate. So I'm hopeful that uh, we will maybe be able to do something that prevents them from dying. Not entirely sure on that at the moment, but what I am sure of is that we will try our very best to use our bow to its best effect. But uh, as you can no doubt see, I'm actually kind of awful with it for some reason. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, let me just go third person because apparently third person gives me more accuracy for some reason. Don't know why that is, but there you go. Apparently I'm able to do a little bit more with it. Even though my horse is actually taking an absolute battering right now, which is not exactly great. Maybe I should just get out my get out my spear, you know? Get out my Kuzate Lance. See if I can do some damage with that instead. Or not, as the case may be, because apparently I am just not able to do anything. Ah, there we go. There's a little bit of extra damage. And we gain two skill points in polearm. Bear in mind that every single time that you can level up a low tier skill you're going to be gaining so many more skill points so it would be really really fun if we could continue with that so maybe i can do something here gotta be a bit careful there we go oh 92 damage but not a kill not a kill i really don't want to die so i'm actually just gonna stay a little bit further away <laughs> for the moment and uh, we'll get out our bow see if i can maybe do a little bit of a snipe never mind no need for the snipe, because that guy had everything under control. Alright, there we go. Okay, so we are actually on a quest at the moment. We are on a quest to find a kidnapped daughter, and she is actually over here. I haven't really done anything since the previous episode. I haven't done anything off screen. I basically did one looter fight that was auto-resolved. And I also purchased a couple more horses because, well, leveling these nomads is actually quite expensive. And uh, I didn't have any more to be able to level them up into horse archers, so I needed to buy some. And I went to a nearby village and they were 160 each. Yeah, can you believe that? Pretty crazy. All right, so once again, we are here. We're going to be speaking to Yana, the she-wolf. And uh, if this guy wants to attack me, I'm going to run away and hopefully try to use my bow to its best effect if i cannot persuade her that's the main that's the main issue here all right let's see 84 percent chance success all right good start good start now let's see if i can do the 39. oh critical success okay got very lucky on both of these very good indeed well not the 84 percent chance the 84 was very easy but otherwise, there you go. There's a nice little bit of extra cash. 1650 not bad at all. Actually wondering whether these guys have anything nice. Gonna buy some cheese and butter, actually, because I do have quite a few bits of grain, and I would like to level up my steward skill a little bit, if I can. So that's gonna be quite nice to do. And we will continue onward. Oh, it seems like Makeb was actually a Kuzate Carnate thief. And I was unaware of that, of course, because in my previous playthrough... I only got around this area quite late, and uh, at this point, Makeb was taken by one of the empires, and, uh, oh, hello, seems to be someone there that I can speak to. Very nice indeed. Okay, so we're, we're randomly being able to complete the Naretz's quest, and uh, I'm going to ask him, can you tell me anything about the Battle of Pendrick? Yes, the Emperor Naretz's had offered to hire our warriors as mercenaries. I saw nothing wrong with that. The Empire was an old bear, well-fed, slow-moving. It wanted to keep what it had. The Sturgeons were, and are, hungry wolves, like us. Sometimes wolves hunt in packs, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes one wolf wants the lion to kill his rival. Most of those who went were Kurgits. They were a young clan. <laughs> they were a young clan. Okay, yeah, we know who the Kurgits are, of course. Their lineage is not like ours. They were always looking to prove themselves. Anyway, at the battle, their Noyan, Gotug, was slain alongside most of the males of his house. What can I say? A thirst for glory is dangerous, both to the thirsty one and those around him. 
Clans rise, clans fall. My duty is to all the Cousates. Look at it this way. Were it not for her husband's death, Lady Missui would never have inherited the leadership of the Kurgets. Death creates opportunity. The survivors of a great battle make a great show of mourning, but inside they rejoice. Aha, so there's a little bit of backstory on the Kurgit Carnate itself. Actually, very cool. And uh, that reminds me, you know what we're going to do? We're going to access, uh, I, was I was having a look at this guy because uh, he was actually a companion in a nearby town. And I thought to myself, oh, maybe I want to recruit this guy, but I'm actually not going to do that because he doesn't have the best stats or anything like that. So let's just go to home real quick. And what I would like to do is take a look at Kuzate. And then we can take a look at some of the people in the Kuzate Khanate. I mean, actually, you know what? I'm going to go back here and we're going to go to, I think Heroes is probably going to be where I want to go. Okay, so female, I think you know where this is going. Do you know where this is going? I am going to attempt to try and find someone that I might be able to marry. So let's see whether that works. All right, so she is not married. She is not married, and her combat skills are crazy good. So might be, might be, oh, she's got an amazing tactics skill too. All right, so she is a member of the Arkit, a noble family of the Kuzates. She has the reputation of being brave, but headstrong. All right, so she was last seen at Jogoris Castle, which I have no idea where that is, so I guess I will track it. It is in Empire territory by the looks of things. It's actually just over the water there. Ah, that's actually quite close. All right, so we do have some looters relatively close by as well. So we will fight those looters and um, hopefully get a couple more level ups and things. Actually, you know what? I think I might have gained a focus. No, I didn't gain a focus point. Okay. Well, that's disappointing. I literally thought I was, uh, I literally thought I was gaining a focus point right there. But no, no, no. Never mind. Just my mind playing tricks on me, as is per usual. Anyway, we're gonna tell these guys just to charge. They're going to absolutely murder everything. I'm actually just going to keep my infantry at the back there because, let's face it, the infantry are probably not going to be able to do that much in this situation. There's a nice little bit of damage right there. Don't really want to take too much damage in this case, so I'm just going to be moving around quite a bit just to reduce the damage that I take and just to distract a little bit as well. And if I'm able to get a couple of hits, then that's great. But if I don't, then I don't really mind, you know. It is just a way for me to kind of take some of the enemy's focus off of my own units and then just go in with my spear and do some damage. There we go. Nice little bit of damage right there. Another one. <laughs> you know, I really quite like spears and it's actually hilarious because whenever I have played Warband in the past, I have always stated in my series i've always been like okay yeah don't give me a spear in this tournament you know don't give me a spear here or there or everywhere and in banner lord i'm like spear okay <laughs> i'm happy with that you know it's actually really nice to be able to use a spear they have dramatically improved the spear combat and that's not to say that there aren't any mods by the way in Warband that don't do spear combat well, because there are a whole bunch. Sparta in particular does spear combat very well because most of the combat there is focused on spears and phalanxes and you know, all that stuff. So really very, very well done in that mod. Anyway, there you go. That is a wonderful victory for us. I believe that takes me to 50 renown. And there you go. My clan has been improved. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how that actually happened, to be honest, because I still needed, as far as I am aware, to recruit a companion. And I'm kind of surprised that, yeah, as you can see, it hasn't actually advanced, as far as I'm aware. Uh, let me actually just go over to my clan screen. Oh, no, I have. Okay. I actually don't know how that was possible considering I oh I guess the quest itself doesn't actually determine when your clan gets to the next level it is literally just renown that determines it oh okay well that's good to know haha <laughs> I thought it was completely the other way around oh well never mind all right so I am very much looking forward to seeing what we can do to try and persuade 
this lady to potentially marry us. I mean, we are literally a random person off the street at this point, and uh, I don't think she's going to be too pleased to see us. Ah, well, it seems like she's not actually even here. She seems to be in Amprela at the moment, so I will be making my way over there as well. Now, the main reason why I'm wanting to get married, of course, is because if my character dies for any particular reason, I would like to have an heir of some kind to be able to continue playing, because as far as I'm aware, if your character, main character dies and you have an heir, then you will be able to continue playing with that heir. So hopefully that is how it is, and I'm actually, you know, I'm actually understanding this accurately enough. Okay, so it seems like she has actually moved on again. She is near Lohana. Where is that? Over there. Isn't that hilarious? Okay, you know what? <laughs> I am going to do a tournament, and we are going to bet a whole bunch of money, and hopefully I will be able to win this helm as well, because the helm is obviously fantastic. Let's see if we can do that. And I'm just going to skip the round there. I knew Romund would get would get through. Bear in mind that this is an Empire tournament, and it is highly unlikely I will actually do that well here. So it might very well be the case where I am wasting money. But uh, oh, I've got a sword. Okay, I think I should I should do okay. That was, that was kind of harsh. That was kind of harsh. All right, hello, person. Hopefully you're not going to be too... Wow. Well, I did qualify for the next uh, stage, but that guy has a lot of one-handed weapon proficiency, so that's, uh, that's kind of harsh. Okay, so let's skip that. Let's skip that, and now we're up against a whole bunch. I hope that they do give me some horse or something uh no there, there are horses available in the empire tournaments but unfortunately this is not for me okay come on kill him i'm gonna turn him for you oh no never mind oh there's actually someone behind me now as well great okay come on come on cavalry i'm sure you can help me out a little bit yeah they're not helping me as you can see, not at all, <laughs> not at all. But yeah, you can see that it dramatically varies how much. Yeah, I'm just going to skip the skip the match. There's no way I'm going to be able to do that, so we're just going to leave. It's unfortunate, really, because I would have loved to have gotten that helmet. But there are there are going to be other opportunities to get the helmet, so I don't really have too much. I, I don't really mind too much about losing in that tournament. I feel like the tournaments that are mostly going to be important are the ones where we actually um, are, are in Kuzate territory. That's the one that is going to be very important to me at the very least. Okay, so Abagai is actually in this army currently raiding something. I think she's currently, yeah, she's currently raiding this. So they are on a campaign at the moment, which is actually kind of hilarious because I'm standing right next to the Empire here. So I'm just going to wait until they're done. And I guess... Actually, you know what? Let's just fight fight these looters. If I can catch them. For some reason, the looters are super fast now all of a sudden. But it's probably because I don't have a huge amount of horses. But uh, I don't think that really matters too much. Because if I have an entire cavalry-focused army, I shouldn't have to worry about having horses for my footmen in my inventory. So there's also that to take into account. It's a completely different style of play, which I very much like. I feel like... The way that they've done things has made things much more different and quite immersive as a result because you're obviously doing something completely different than what you would do if you were playing with the Sturgeons, for example, because I played with the Sturgeons in my other playthrough. And generally, they're going to need a bunch of horses in your inventory so that they can actually start moving around reasonably fast because otherwise you're just going to be moving around at a snail's pace and it's going to be very frustrating but anyway I'm gonna speak to this guy actually i don't want to speak to him i would like to speak to oh that's that no that's his army she's in there no uh okay i'm, I'm not entirely sure why i can't uh, interact with 
the rest. Yeah, look, she's in there, so it's kind of weird. I'm not entirely sure why I can't interact with the army itself and then try to speak to her, but that seems to be making things a bit a bit tricky at this point. I really don't know why that would be, because I have in the past interacted with armies and has uh, been absolutely fine. So that's that's kind of strange. But I guess what what I can do is literally just go in here and we will sell my armor that we gained because we're going to get quite a bit of cash for this. Going to sell the weapons as well. 826, pretty good. And we're also going to buy some horses because I do need one to be able to level up my, uh, my people. And I'm actually wondering, can you use sumter horses for them? I don't think you, yeah, I don't think you can. Uh, but it would be cool to test it out. Mm, it's looking unlikely. I don't think so. I don't think so. All right. Well, whatever the case, I'm just going to shadow this army for the moment. And hopefully they will disband relatively soon. And then I will be able to speak to our potential wife, I guess, maybe. Oh, now what do we have going on here? I was shadowing them for a second. And as you can see... Lucon himself, he is one of the leaders of one of the Empire factions. He is here. I'm going to speak to him and uh, annoy him a little bit because no doubt he is just like, ah, oh, let us kill all of the Kuzate. And then all of a sudden some random comes up and is like, can you tell me about this? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I was a junior officer on Noretz's staff. People say much about the battle that betrays lack of understanding of Noretz's and of the circumstances he faced. Naretzes had an obligation to avenge the Batanian attacks on our land. He marched out with all the forces he could gather. The Vlandians betrayed us, but that's what you expect from honorless barbarians. Fortune favored the enemy. What matters is that we did what honor required. Perhaps Naretzes was rash, sending our infantry up into the hills to storm the Batanian fort, but he thought he could grab the pass quickly before the enemy had time to reinforce it. If he had made the other wager... And that turned out to be wrong. People would say he was hesitant. I stayed with the Noretzis until we were forced back to our camp by the Sturgeon infantry and then fought on the battlements. Eventually we could hold them no longer. I did not see what happened to Noretzes or to our banner. Arenikos got us out of there and I got us home. Uh, well, and got us home, even. I did not respect Arenikos before, but that day I saw he was worthy to be emperor. All right, well, thank you. Thank you for letting me know about that, you very in in pitch black darkness person. Yes, that, that didn't really work out too well for me. Anyway, uh, I'm hopeful that they will not murder my future wife, potentially. <laughs> that is not going to be, uh, that's not going to be a very, very good start, is it? Especially if she ends up getting killed. That would not be good, because obviously we have death turned on. So... That might very well happen. That actually has happened to a couple of lords that I have fought in the past in the other series. So, mm, you know, got to be a bit careful about that. Oh, you really... Oh, wow. You don't really want to raid that village when the enemy has 666 as as his army size, does he? Come on now. Don't be silly. He's being he's being a little bit uh, overzealous, I think, Hurunag. Hurunag is being quite overconfident. And as you can see, he's actually about to be intercepted... And I think, oh, oh, just about. What a, wow, that's that's a really, really overconfident fellow. I'm going to like serving with him, I think. Well, it looks as though Lucon was able to capture the castle, as you can see right here. But we actually do have something else going on where Amprila is under siege by one of the bigger vassals from the Kuzate Khanate. So it might very well be that they are going to swap a castle for a town but it would be very very bad indeed especially for me if the Kuzate Khanate takes a lot of losses in this particular engagement and uh, in these uh, troubling times because I kind of want to join them you know I want to join them so if they do get eliminated a little bit too soon then that would not be great well, it looks like the castle is about to be taken by the Kuzate once again. Yes, there you go. Hurunag has taken it back. And uh, Siratos Castle literally only had about 53 defenders in there. So very, very obviously going to be able to take it back with an army of 225. But as you can see, he almost lost. 
a grand total of 100 units, which is really quite a lot of damage to take. But if that's how it's going to be, then that's how it's going to be. At least he took back that. And uh, it seems like, unfortunately, Amprela was not taken by the Kuzate for some reason. Not entirely sure why that is. I guess they appeared out of nowhere. You know, the Empire appeared out of nowhere and they were just like, okay, well, it's time to clear off now. And they ran away. Oh, we have a bit of a battle on our hands here as well. So you can see the Kuzate are up against two vassals from the Empire. Which Empire is this, by the way? Encurion. Uh, is it Southern? No, it's Northern. Northern Empire. Well, of course it is Northern Empire. They're right next to the Sturgeons, so of course it is Northern. But anyway, yeah. So Northern Empire is primarily going to be fighting the Kuzate by the looks of things. And as you can see, the Kuzate in a field battle are... Well, winning. <laughs> they are winning like no one's business. So let's see if we can actually follow them a little bit more. I would love to be part of this battle right now, but obviously we are really not very... <laughs> let's just say that we are quite early on in the, in the series, and it's highly unlikely that I would be able to really fight at the moment against a vassal from an enemy faction. It seems like it's going to be very difficult for us. I'm hopeful that they will now split up the army, they still, they have 87 wounded troops, and I'm hopeful that once they split it up, I will be able to speak to our future wife. All right, so uh, bear in mind that I have ceased following the army because I don't think they were going to stop fighting. I really don't. And uh, once they have, I will try to find our future wife once again, and then we will do a little bit of courting at that point. But uh, I did stop off at this nearby Kuzate village and they asked me to deal with this bandit hideout. I literally have one day remaining, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, yeah, hopefully we will be able to do something. Oh, never mind. Okay, apparently there's no one here. <laughs> apparently there is no one here apart from the bandit leader. And I'm actually thinking that we will not fight a duel at this point because I don't really think I'm going to be able to that effectively so we're just going to tell my people just to charge straight on in here we should be absolutely fine to deal with them and uh hopefully yeah there we go <laughs> easy enough i just have to act as a bit of a tank because at the moment i am not very good at uh, one versus one battling especially with a spear in my hand you know without a horse i'm gonna be uh, it's gonna be pretty harsh but anyway, there you go. A couple of prisoners for us. That's not too bad. And we do have some arrows. Ooh, very nice. Actually, better shoulders than what we had before. Would you have expected that? No, definitely not. I wouldn't have expected it. Anyway, we did gain a horse. And we have completed the task. And I actually wonder, can I... Ah, oh, there we go. I just increased my relation with the guy. And that was basically it. Oh, okay. Well, I was actually hoping for a little bit more than that. I was hoping for a little bit of action in the in the fight itself, but uh, no, we didn't get that. I might need to change my banner as well, by the way, because my banner colors, I don't know whether you've noticed that, but when I'm about to go into a fight, the power levels are displayed on the top, as you no doubt know already. But the thing is, is that when I do that in a hideout or something, it's so dark that I can't actually tell what my power level actually is in comparison to the opponent. So it might be necessary for me to change my banner in some way. I think I'm, I think I can. I think I can change that through the options somewhere, maybe. But uh, yeah, I think it might be necessary. So we're just going to continue recruiting people. I also do need to get... Uh, I need to get some more horses. I do need to get some more horses. So I'm hopeful that maybe we'll be able to do that at the nearby town here. All right, so let's see what we have here. All right, so it, wow, it is literally free-for-alls the whole way through in the first round. And we do get an Eastern plated leather vest. Might actually be quite good for us. All right, I'm looking forward to it. Let's bet a, a couple of pieces of gold. I have a spear in the first round. Oh, dear. I 
wonder how the other people are doing. Not, not great, I guess. Because, let's face it, fighting with spears is, uh, well, like this. It's literally turning into some kind of poking match, and I personally don't very much enjoy this. <laughs> it is uh, kind of uncomfortable. Let's just say that. I'm hopeful that I will just literally be able to tank this guy until Blue comes over here and murders him. And then hopefully I will be able to, uh, you know, do something. Like uh, kill him from behind or something. There we go. And hopefully this guy will now die as well. But we are already through as far as I'm aware. We're already through to the next round. So I th I'm pretty happy about that. Because, uh, well, let's just say that I don't really want to fight with spears. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I actually won that. Can you believe it? Wow. The uh, spear round, everyone. Yes. If the, if the developers are watching, please don't, don't allow spear rounds anymore on, on foot. I feel like it's just, oh, it's just such a grind and uh, not that enjoyable. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. Maybe you enjoy it. I don't know. But anyway, let's, uh, let's bet another little bit, and hopefully we'll get... Yes, this, this is what I'm talking about. This is what the Crusade are all about, in my opinion. All about spears, horses, all about archery and everything. A lot of fun to be had here. And hopefully I won't get murdered. <laughs> Did you see that? That was very close. I was almost dead there for a second. Okay, well, apparently I, I might almost be dead still. That seems to be working quite nicely, and uh, we can now pick up one of their step horses, or we can now get on it and uh, do massive damage to him. I have a feeling I'm going to probably die against this guy, so don't don't hold your breath. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> Maybe do hold your breath. It was only a second, so it's not too bad. Anyway, there you go. We're through, and we're actually up against a Kuzate marksman. What do you bet? We're going to get bows. What do you bet they're going to give me bows in this round? No, they gave me a spear and a shield again. Really? Uh, not, not a fan. Not a fan. That was close. There we go. Nice 17 damage to finish him off right there. And we're now up against, I bet the Dark Khan is going to win. No, the Spear Infantry won. Okay, very surprising. All right, so let's bet another little bit right there. And let's do this. Ah, oh, nice. Okay, they actually gave me something, not a, not a spear and a shield. Ah, oh, I so appreciate that very much. Very much appreciate that. Okay, so let's see if we can do some damage here to this guy. Gotta be a bit careful. Nice, 24 damage. Nice, 59 damage. I think he's done. Yep, there we go. He is done. He just did not know how to fight me because, well, let's face it, I have a very unorthodox fighting style. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Nice, nice amount of money. Did gain a little bit of renown. And we also gained a uh, leather vest, which should be quite nice so let's see if i can yep there we go that is a that is a lovely upgrade right there massive upgrade in actual fact very very cool all right well that will be it for this episode i thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time